let's start and have a look at the lineup of wines here that are all from Germany. What they have in common, besides the fact that they're from the same country, is that they come from the same house. And uh, before we start the tasting notes or looking how they actually taste, as one might be curious, uh, we want to look a little bit at the history or what they have in common or what sets them apart from other wines uh, that are originating in Europe. European wine history and also the current geography is more or less divided in two parts. You distinguish between the Mediterranean area and wine growing region and uh, the northern part of Europe. And the most obvious difference, I would say, between the two is that there's a lot of blending historically happening in the Mediterranean part, in the southern European part, meaning varietal blending, different grape varietals, versus um, straight or single varietal wines that you find mostly in northern Europe. The big dominating grape varietal in Germany is Riesling, and Riesling versus other uh, varietals lends itself not very ideal for direct blending with other grape varietals, with other straight direct uh, single grape varietals. At least I haven't heard of a Riesling Sauvignon Blanc blend or a Riesling Chardonnay blend. These things are, uh, they might have been tried but certainly were not successful. And what happened? After having found ways to cross breed versus blend, uh, certain varietals uh, and using a, a cross like Connell where a Trollinger grape was crossed with a Riesling or when you take Bacchus where a Müller Thurgau <coughs> and a Riesling and a Sylvaner were crossed. Um, there are a couple other examples. Donfelder is another one. We have a Donfelder here in the red part. The red arena, if you will, of wines. We stick here mostly to whites. After you took a new varietal that had one parental part with Riesling, from a sudden, or from a sudden, it was realized that Riesling itself lent, or shall we say, lent itself, Riesling lent itself for blending purposes with the wines that were actually originally crossed. And out came a whole lineup of wines uh, which are, I would call them brands at this point. When you look at the first one here, Liebfrauenmilch is a very old brand, so to say, going back to the 1700s already, even though the composition was a different one than it is today. Nevertheless, it is a blend. Um, we have a Zeller Schwarze Katz, which is uh, more or less the same idea but uh, there is an absence of Silvano in the blend because it's traditionally not grown in the Mosel Valley and the same applies to the Peacepot of Michelsberg. So we're having one line of, of old established uh, uh, blends with or Riesling blends. Here prominent, a large bottle of course Riesling of which it all derives and comes from. Uh, then we have on this side two wines that set themselves apart because they fall yet in a different category you have Bacchus, again here it is a uh, cross of uh, grape varietals that in this case was not blended. And with the Spätlese you have Bacchus and Connor and Riesling blended. The uh, difference is simply the mast rate is higher with the Spätlese, it's a more voluptuous, a bigger wine. And uh, at the very end we have a Donfelder, which we call Vino Noir, which in itself is the cross of two other crosses. Tasting notes. Let's see what I've written down here. Peace Potto Michelsberg 08. Bright and clear appearance, light yellow. On the palate very expressive and well defined. A strong backbone of firm acidity is counterbalanced by subtle sweetness reminiscent of ripe pear but also sugar sprinkled cinnamon sticks. A spicy element in other words. Similar to when one enters a store that sells aroma candles without the presence of the cloying sweetness usually associated with it. Uh, then I have the Liebfraumilch 08, even more aromatic than the Peace Porto, which must have to do with the Kerner varietal that is part of the blend. Typical Rheinhessen fruit, rounder and bigger than what the Mosel produces. The wine is very happy. The natural acidity is not as prevalent 
a bouquet of flavors on the mid palate, gardenia, rose petals, jasmine, all wrapped in a candy-like element, while not overly sweet, finishes very clean. Uh, Riesling 08, on the nose subtle and unpretentious, fairly neutral. On the palate, however, mouth-watering acidity, ripe yet crisp green apple notes, a delicate sweetness and some spiced grapefruit in the finish. This is a textbook expression of a Rheinhessen Riesling. Bold, round, upfront appealing and very likable. Next one is Peter Brom Spätlese 2008. It's a blend of Connell, Bacchus and Riesling grapes. This is a big wine that is not shy in expressing its qualities. The aromatic Connell and Bacchus varietals display a large spectrum of warm colors fresh cut pineapple, exotic guava, passion fruit, cantaloupe, all carried in a cushion of big ripe sweetness and kept together in shape and form by the high acidity of Riesling. Very impressive. Next one is Bacchus, 2008, the younger brother of the Spätlese. This wine lives by expressing exotic nuances of orange blossom, ripe pear and melon right on the nose that carries over very precise to the palate, beautifully integrated in natural sweetness and finishing with some surprise elements of Muscat, a very likable varietal that certainly has standalone qualities as this beautiful example proves. Finally we have the Vino Noir 2008 which is a Donfelder grape, 100% Donfelder a deep red appearance, nearly black, appealing and promising on the nose, on the palate very friendly, bursting of ripe, fruity boysenberries with some black cherries and ripe black currant in the finish. Very appealing, easy to understand with some hidden layers of licorice as a bonus at the end.